so many of us want to do breath work, meditation, yoga, fill in the blank. Mm. We know it's so good for us. Mm. And yet we're so quote unquote busy that we just yeah. can't seem to squeeze it into our day, even though we know it's going to be so good when we do it. So I would just yeah. love to get, that's quite a big bit there. But I'd love to yeah, get your yeah, thoughts yeah. On, on some of that. Oh, I love that. There's so much like juicy details to unpack mm. with this one. The number one predictor of success is self-efficacy. It's the belief in ourself and our ability to be able to achieve a task. And in the same way, the number one reason we feel a lack of motivation to do something that we know is good for us is lack of self-efficacy, is not mm. believing that we're doing it properly or that we know how to do it or that the way we're doing it is actually going to generate any benefit. So that's one of the things. The other thing is the lack of intrinsic reward value that we put on something. So I'll share a story with you. A couple of years ago, I wanted to start a gratitude journal. And it was like during COVID and I was like, oh yeah, I'm like seeing that this is a really good idea and I'm gonna reduce my stress. And so I'm gonna challenge myself and start this gratitude journal. And I'm generally quite a grateful, optimistic person. So it's not that I needed to, you know, like change my perspective. I just wanted the practice of doing it, especially before bed, because I wanted to get like even better sleep. And I started doing it for a couple of days and then it, I was falling off the wagon with this habit and I'm like, yo, I am a habit coach. Like I should definitely be able to do this one. And I just couldn't get myself to do it. Fast forward a year later, I read a clinical trial on um, the benefits of gratitude journaling. And it listed so many things that really resonated with me, things that were important for me. And one of them was getting better sleep. And it actually talked about like the increased REM sleep and the deep sleep. It talked about the reduction in inflammation. And there was actually measurable and objective outcomes that I could say, well, if I practice a gratitude journal every day, every day, these are the outcomes that I could achieve in my life. And then it became real and it became really valuable. It wasn't just like, this is good for me. It was like, mm. oh no, this has the power to change my life mm. in these ways that are important to me. So there's cognitive knowledge. We all know breath work is good for us, but does it resonate deeply with our, with our, um, our values, with our intentions for our life? Because here's the thing, 22 minutes, we all have it. Every mm. single one of us. I run two global companies. I have 22 minutes that I can give you. I would love to know, you know, the average person spends two and a half hours scrolling through social media. That's literally like, I'm talking also CEOs. I run questionnaires when I do my um, corporate speaking events. And one of the questions I always ask is, you know, confess your unwanted habit, your most common unwanted habit. And the number one thing that comes through is I scroll on my phone too much. And I'm talking CEOs to middle management to new grads. Everyone says similar things. I think it's a perceived lack of time. It's a perceived lack of motivation when I think it's really about the lack of awareness about the true benefits of breath work for that individual person. I think it's, it doesn't work just giving someone a list of benefits it has to resonate with their soul. You know, they have to go, I can see how this will change my life. And then the other thing is they really need to feel it. They need to do it, get the benefit and go, okay, here's the reward learning. Now I get it. Mm. And that it's like with you, the exercise that will just fuel the motivation to keep doing it. 